Mastery learning is an educational philosophy that was first proposed in 1968 by this guy, Benjamin Bloom. He believed that most students, perhaps over 90%, can master what we have to teach them, and it is a task of instruction to find the means which will enable our students to master the subject under consideration. This philosophy gave rise to a multitude of alternative grading practices, from standards-based grading in the 1990s to mastery-based testing in 2019. While these systems have become increasingly popular in secondary education, their adoption in the post-secondary setting is still somewhat limited. Today, we've gathered two professors from North Dakota State University to hear about their experiences implementing mastery-based alternative grading systems in their classes. Hi, my name is Warren Christensen. I use he, him pronouns, and I am a professor in the Department of Physics at North Dakota State University. So I'm Jenny Momsen, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a professor of biological sciences and I'm also director of the discipline-based education research PhD program. That's a big mouthful <laughs> there um, here at NDSU. Do you use mastery learning in your classes? Yes. yes. I do use a form of mastery-based learning in pretty much all of my classes. I use mastery learning in both my introductory physics courses that I teach and in my upper division courses. Can you give an example of the time you used mastery learning techniques in a course, including the name of the course, the type of course, and its enrollment size? Yeah, so I used it this past spring semester in my introductory biology class. That's a 100 level class that serves a lot of different majors, not just biology majors, and enrollment is about 135 students. Um, we use standards-based learning approach um, with mastery-based grading, which means the students have about 15 standards and they get to demonstrate their proficiency with each of the standards and they have multiple attempts at demonstrating that proficiency. So our course is supported by two learning assistants, sometimes three learning assistants, and those students help us um, with office hours, basically when students don't meet expectations, we ask them to come talk to the learning assistants and they can help them figure out, you know, they, the students do get feedback on where they went awry, um, but getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction with a learning assistant really helps the students kind of figure out and practice so that they're ready to go the next time they test on one of the uh, standards and that they can be successful. Uh, in my upper division uh, quantum mechanics course, quantum mechanics one and two, which I believe are physics 451, 651, and 452, 652. It's a upper division undergraduate and master's uh, course. So in that particular course, it's even um, probably more extreme. The, basically the point I got to eventually in that course was that I would, um, I would give students homework assignments uh, through, for, do each week. And instead of collecting the homework assignments, I would give them a quiz that closely aligned with the homework assignment that they were given. And I think that was a really effective method because it really puts the onus to the students on, on learning the material and not just finishing the assignment. Um, oftentimes finishing the assignment is done just to get it turned in and this kind of changes that a little bit. I even encourage students to use some of the published solutions of older editions of the textbook. Uh, and I think that's really, uh, works really, really well for many students. In addition, probably the best example of mastery learning in that quantum mechanics course is what I use for exams. So I give exams that have novel problems that students haven't seen before. They tend to be pretty hard, but the goal is to kind of use exam time as a chance to also learn. And students are able to um, perform those exams. And when they get the feedback back for those exams, again, feedback I give via video uh, to the students, they are encouraged to improve their grade to kind of come in and take an oral retake exam. They get one week, I hand out the solutions to the exam. They're able to study those solutions, uh, come to me and ask questions within the week after the exam has been given and feedback has been given back to the students. And then the week following that, students have an opportunity to come to, to uh, set up a time with me, come to my office and work the problems out on the board. So they actually work through them without their notes uh, to show me, and then I ask questions, I ask follow-up questions. So in some sense, yeah, well, they could just memorize that, that question, but because I'm asking follow-up questions, it is a more difficult kind of um, environment. It's more challenging, and so I can really probe what they know and don't know in that content and be confident that they have learned the material. 
And when you're in a course, the goal is to learn the material by the end of the class. I, I think it is a bit superficial to assume that just because they didn't know it in week four doesn't mean that they don't deserve credit for maybe learning that by the end of the semester. I think that's what mastery learning really does, and that's how I've been implementing it in my courses. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to stay up to date on everything related to alternative grading.